hello and welcome back to this channel so in today's tutorial we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit more of animation in Adobe Fresco but this time we're gonna concentrate on a bouncy lettering animation and and we'll obviously not do just the lettering part we're gonna go ahead and make some nice background for the lettering using blend modes and shapes and things like that okay so let's just get started click on create new and let's go into digital and click on current screen size. You can choose any file size you want for this illustration. I'm just going to do that because it looks better over here. All right. So once you have the screen size, let's go ahead and start illustrating. So you can start with the animation part or make the background first. I think I'm going to start with the text animation first because I think a lot of people out here might be watching this video for that. So let's go ahead and do the text animation first and then we'll go ahead and do the background. Okay, so the brush that I'm going to use to letter my lettering is if you go into lettering, you'll see something called as gritty and I think I'm going to use that. Yes, I really like this. So I'm just going to use that. My size is set to 66. Let me just quickly check. Yes, that looks good to me. And my smoothing is set to one and everything else is the default setting that I have. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and quickly sketch out my text the way I want it to be. Maybe we could make a simple hello or you can use any text that you want. That's totally okay. I'm going to write hello because I'm lazy to write anything else, okay? So hello, probably it'll go like this and then I'll have my O and maybe it'll go out like that. Oh uh, no, I don't like it, but I'm going to go here and reduce the opacity so that I know what I want to edit in my next sketch. Okay, so click on new layer now. If you feel you're okay with that, you can keep it like that, but I think I'm going to go ahead and edit it a little bit more. Like that. Like this and maybe like that okay let me go ahead and uncheck this okay i think i like this hello better so i'm gonna keep it like this now you can go ahead and click on this again and reduce the opacity because you want it really light now click on a new layer and this layer is going to be where you're going to make your animation or motion in fresco so if you haven't watched my any of my other tutorials on animation or if you don't know anything about animation or motion in Fresco, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and watch my intro to animation video because it talks about everything related to animating in Fresco. I'm going to walk you through this tutorial in such a way that it's okay for people who have a little bit idea about animation in Fresco. Uh, for example, they know how the frames work and things like that. So if you haven't any idea, I would highly recommend that you go check that video out. I will post it in the description box below as well as as a card over here. All right, so now you're on a different layer and it's time to make this animation. So there are two types you can create this animation. So if you look at this on the screen right now, um, the hello world that I've created right now, you can see that the H is quite bouncy, E is also bouncy. But after that, the L, L and O kind of doesn't bounce so much. It just becomes stagnant, right? So I'm going to show you exactly how you can achieve both these effects. I mean, it is not ideal that you have both these effects in one lettering itself, but I just wanted to show you that you can create things in two different ways. So choose which one you like to use and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so there's the first frame here. I'm going to go ahead and click on my animation tool here so that you get all these frames. Okay, now you're in the first frame and I'm going to go ahead and draw on this and stop. Now click on a new layer. And I'm going to show you how to make the bouncy alphabets. Okay, so click on a new layer and I'm going to draw again over this and a little bit more than the previous one, right? So click again. But now you don't know where you actually drew the last one, like where you stopped the previous one. So what you have to do is go to settings and let's turn on the onion skin. And if you want, you can reduce the opacity and the frames i want it to be visible only for the previous frame so i'm just going to keep it at one so that i don't want to see any other frames but just the previous frame okay all right so now you can see there's this previous frame i'll go here and reduce the opacity a little bit more so it doesn't affect my view okay now i'm here all right so now that i'm in layer three or frame three i'm gonna go ahead and make this more one more that more 
So you don't have to be too perfect that you're following the lines. And I'll show you why. It's going to go ahead and stop here. Because now we'll go ahead and play this, play all. It'll be super fast, obviously. Pause. Go to your settings and maybe reduce this to six or seven. Check which looks good on your illustration. Okay, this is too slow. I'm going to increase this maybe to 10 or nine. Yep, that looks okay. So this is how you create a bouncy alphabet. That is, you draw each frame from scratch so this this everything is from scratch and now if you don't want to create a bouncy lettering but you do want to create just the lettering moving forward all you can do is click and duplicate frame and now it's already here and start moving like this click and duplicate frame and then continue where you left off like that duplicate frame and then like this like that and if you play all See, it stops bouncing over here and just goes in like that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And I kind of like bouncy lettering, but the problem is that it is a lot of work because you have to do the lettering again and again and again. And that's a lot of work, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate frame and try to finish this as it is like this. So you see, I'm drawing a lot. For each frame, you can actually do little by little, like step by step, instead of drawing such a long stroke. It's actually nicer when you have little strokes for each frame, then it gives a very nice effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and check our animation now. There you go, pause, and I'm going to go here and hide that layer because I don't want it. Now play all. And there you go. You see what happened here? It's not bouncy, it's just saying hello. But I really like the bouncy one. I would highly suggest that you do bouncy. <laughs> okay, there you go. Our animation is ready, but we're not done yet because we're gonna create a background and we're going to go ahead and animate things in the background as well, okay? So for this, I have a color palette for you guys. If you want, go ahead and download it from the link in the description box below. It's just an image. Go to your image, photos, and bring it in. Now click on done. All you have to do is click and hold until you select that color and make a new layer and then just write on it. Just draw, it doesn't matter which brush you're on, okay? Once you're done, you can hide it, you can hide the color palette as well. If you go here into recent, you'll see all your colors are here. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and put some background to this. Go back to the bottommost layer, click on a new layer, go to your pink, maybe this one that is 359, 25, and 100. Go to your fill tool and fill it in with vector film. New one, maybe I don't want pink. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click on my hue saturation and or the adjustment layers. Click on this clip so that it gets applied only to this particular layer. Click on hue and saturation. And in here, you can change the color to whatever you want. And maybe I'm going to keep it. I keep it around here. That's 166. And then click on this so that it goes away. All right. Now click on a new layer and we want some elements in it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on ships. And in here, if you go to floral, by the way, this is a shared one. So if you don't have this, click on this plus here and discover new shapes. And then you will see florals and click on follow. And then it will automatically show up here. Click on that. And I'm going to use this particular icon here. You can just rotate it like this and use the corner edges to make it bigger, smaller and maybe put one here and I'm going to use dark blue and click on fill, vector fill, that's a better option and I'm going to go ahead and turn it around, maybe make it like this and put one here as well and now go to any of your brushes and that's okay but I don't want this to be so dark. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on levels and click here and maybe overlay. Yes, overlay looks better. So I'm just going to choose overlay and opacity. Let me keep it at that. You can lighten it if you want, but it's okay if it's dark, that's fine. 
Now click on a new layer and let's make one more animation. And now let's go to any of the brushes actually. You can go to the same brush if you want. Maybe reduce it to about 40s or something so that it's nicer. And let's make, oh wait, I want to change the color to this blue maybe. And I'm going to go ahead and make a flower like that. That looks good. And now I'll click on path and I'll make sure there's something like this so that it goes in a path. I'll reduce the frame rate so the, or maybe increase it so that it's a little slower. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to make this into color bone. No, I think color dodge. Yeah, this looks better. I'll make it color dodge. I know you'll say that. Why didn't you just draw it in white? Um, that is because if in the end you decide to change the color of the entire document using the adjustment layers, it's better to not use white because white doesn't get affected by these color changes. And if you use some other color, it'll change accordingly. Uh, I know for this it might not matter, but still sometimes it's always better to use screen modes because sometimes you just feel like, oh, I don't want color dodge, I want overlay and things like that. So it's always better to have that option uh, to change things very easily in any digital illustration actually. Let's add some multiples. Let's scatter them a bit. That looks good. And I'm going to add one more here so that there's a bit more over here, okay? Okay, that looks cool. Now let's pause this and click on a new layer. And now I want to add a few more uh, textures, right? So I'm going to go here again, go here. By the way, if only your vector brush is highlighted and everything is grayed out, just click on a different layer and it should be all right, okay? Now go to your pixel brushes. I'm going to go into rigs and then something called as rate texture. You can also use rate gaps, that's fine too. And I'm going to go ahead and add some things like this, but I want the dark blue as well. This, and I think I'm going to use the rate texture. I think I like that, yeah. I definitely like that better. I'm going to add some texture like that, okay? And now I'll go in here and probably change this to, how about screen? Yeah, that looks better. What about overlay? That looks better too, but I think I'm going to do screen, but that means the dark blue ones didn't show up, right? Because, yeah, it's it's a different color. So it, you can see it, but it's not that obvious actually. But that's okay. Sometimes you want things that are not so obvious. So you can use that as well, or you can create a new layer. And here you can go ahead and do a, or first draw some things like this and then go ahead and do an overlay or anything that you want. Okay, overlay that looks better and you can see that you have some blotches, right? Okay, that's cool and wait a minute, we're not done yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to this layer here and click on a new layer so that it's in the background of all these things that we have created right now. And I am on, I'm going to use Rake Grid by the way and I'll choose this dark color or maybe yeah let's choose the dark color i'm going to go ahead and draw some lines like this but i want the size to be a bit bigger maybe like that and i'm going to go ahead and draw things like that okay and since the animation thing is on i'll click on plus and now i'm going to go ahead and draw again i'm not going to draw on the existing lines that i've drawn but I'm just going to go ahead and do this so that it's easier again, again. If you play, you'll see that it's, it's too fast. Okay, wait a minute. So let's go ahead and do again, one more maybe. Oops, I'm here. It doesn't matter if you have a few lines here and there, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate each frame so that it stays for a little longer. So you could have changed the frame rate, but then it changes the frame rate for the entire animation and we don't want that. So click duplicate frame. Now go to the third one, duplicate, do the same thing and duplicate all the frames. 
it's okay if you miss a little bit and it's not exactly perfect don't worry and don't worry about the number of frames it really doesn't matter just click on play and you'll see that this is changing so pause click here and now let's go to our levels and change this to overlay you can see that it is changing in the background if you want this to be even more slower you can go ahead and duplicate this again you have to duplicate all by the way you can just duplicate some now play all and you see it's slowly changing but it's not too much that it's right in your face right okay that's perfect and if you want to add stuff you can add a bit more as well for example i can choose shapes again and in here i'll use this flower shape okay and let me do that and if you want you can add a bit more here like this and choose some color that you want maybe this red and let's make sure it's on a new level new layer i mean on top of this maybe and then you can just fill it in vector and obviously it's all red go to your brush so that you can see it go in here and here you can choose different different things linear burn lighten screen color dodge whatever you want you know overlay anything that you want you can reduce the opacity so that it's visible but it's not that visible you can also put it below the layer that is animation play all and you can see that this is completely animated and in the end if you feel like oh i don't like this color scheme at all just go to the top of the layer wherever you are click on a new layer and go to your hue saturation or adjustment layers go to hue saturation and now you can move this to any shade of color that you want right so you don't have to stick to what you have created just now maybe make it red and play on and don't worry the since the text is in black it doesn't get affected if your text is in not black and you don't want the color scheme to be affected to that you can just click and hold until that gets selected and bring it to the top of the artboard you have to pause this click and hold and bring it top so that the hue saturation is applied to everything else but not the text that is only if your text is not black and it's some other color and then you can do this okay let me just go ahead and change this i don't know if i want that it's blue this is the one we have and maybe a little bit a little bit a little bit, a little bit. yeah i guess this this is fine orange is fine play all and there you go i'm just going to do this and your animated text is ready so that's it that brings us to the end of this tutorial and i hope you liked it if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when i post a new video if you do create something with my tutorials don't forget to tag me on instagram with premium color or thing beyond color because i love seeing you guys creating things out of my tutorials if you want to support this channel you can always buy me a coffee at coffee.com you can find the link to do that in the description box below okay that's it i guess i'll see you in the next video then bye bye